911, what's the nature of your emergency? Welcome back to the Talk to a Living podcast. I'm your host, Ashley Walton. In today's episode, I'm going to first let you in on a little secret. And the little secret is the way that we learn the best is by teaching others. That's one of the greatest ways that we're able to retain information, apart from some other little tricks that I know that I've shared in the past on on this show. But whenever I get on here and I'm on the mic, chances are, I would say maybe 90% of the time, I just got done reading a book or watching a training video or doing something to where I have information in my mind. There's information on written words sitting in front of me, and I want to share it so that I can better learn it myself. And in our last episode, I talked about the fact that 2020 is no different than 2021 unless we choose for it to be. And when those words came out of my mouth, it was it was actually a learning experience for me. That wasn't something that was pre-written. It wasn't something that I had in mind to say. And it, it was so important for me to say that because 2020 really is no different than 2021 is going to be. And this is the reason why. We have to make the cognitive decision to to make the difference, to choose. And I know I've discussed this in past episodes, but I think that New Year's resolutions are just a big bucket of bullshit because we have the ability to choose today what we want that new thing to be, what we want that change to be. And I talked about the freight train in our last episode too, and I think that's a great analogy because we're setting course for where we want the direction of this train to go and the train being our life. And in every single car inside of that train, We have the responsibility to ourselves to be able to decide what we want to fill each one up with. And when it comes to New Year's resolutions, I I hope that you can also change your frame of mind because it wasn't until I started to realize just how important self-development is for us all that the whole concept of New Year's resolutions just became complete bullshit. Now, I believe it's important to set a date, and I understand everybody chooses the 1st of January as this monumental day and Everybody seemingly has these expectations of how it's a new year and a new me and it's going to be a completely different life. And I always wonder now, why not start that completely different life and decide that today I now live a completely different life? And this is something I I think is really important. But Clint and I, every single year, we actually sit down together and we create a list for what our intentions are going forward for the next year. I would say that's really the only monumental thing that we do, but it's mostly quarter-based. So at the beginning of every fourth quarter, the beginning of the, the four quarters, right, which would be on a calendar year, we sit down and we make a list. And this could be things like... um Painting the house, for example, that was on our list, something that we knew that we wanted to get done for the year. It could be repainting the the kitchen. That was also something. Remodeling our house. That was also something. And also th- things that we could do together. So taking particular trips or going to certain places. Um, the thing that comes to mind for me, I would like to see the Grand Canyon. Clint and I live about two and a half, maybe three hours away from the Grand Canyon. We've lived here our whole lives and I have never been to the Grand Canyon. So that's something I would like to put on my list for next year. And in, in addition to all of the things that I set forward on a quarterly, on a monthly and on a weekly basis for myself, I think it's also important for us to have these sort of these big things that we're able to put together collectively as a unit. And this is a great project for families to be able to do together because having input from your kids or from your spouse, there might be things that are important to them that perhaps you weren't privy to before opening up the bucket of conversation to be able to share with one another. And it makes me wonder when people decide that they're going to make that change and they they decide to essentially postpone it, right? Because we're postponing the inevitable if we're saying to ourselves, I'm going to be better, but I'm going to sell myself short and I'm going to wait until January the 1st instead of starting it now. What exactly is holding us back when we put that in our minds that we, we have to set something monumental for ourselves, but then right off of the bat, 
we're actually, we're buckling ourselves down in chains because we're setting the limitations straight at the onset. And that's an important thing for us to bring to the surface because why would you want to chain yourself down to a restriction of time because society has set this date of January 1st for us to be able to move forward and do something that is important to us? Why not start now? And most importantly, what are the things that are holding you back? Is there a reason that you have to wait until January the 1st? Or is that something that you're just telling yourself? We we play these stories in our minds because as a society, as a culture, we're told that there are certain things that we have to do on certain days. And holidays are a perfect example of that. As you listen, I'm going to venture to guess that you are either a first responder or you're in a family with a first responder. The one thing that we know from living this lifestyle is that there is no such thing as a set holiday. There are there are many times where there are birthdays and holidays that are either missed, even funerals altogether that are missed, or that we have to alter, we have to change the dates on and celebrate on our own terms and in our own time. And that's the way that I believe we should be living our lives altogether on our own terms and on our own time, creating a timeline that is sufficient for us and that suits our our lifestyle and our way of living. And it doesn't shackle us down to this pretentious way of living because that's how the rest of the world lives. We know that the way that we live our lives is not the way that the rest of the world lives their lives. And it's no different when it comes to setting goals for ourselves and to embettering the lives, not only as individuals, but also as a family unit. And I want to pull that family unit back in again because I believe it is so imperative for us to be able to incorporate our families the people that we love, the ones that we care about the most, and tell them what our plans are because that's our support system. That's our unit. And also to be able to create different ways that we can hold each other accountable and hold ourselves accountable to make sure that we don't fall off of the tracks. And when there's something that is truly important to you, we oftentimes need to course correct. And sometimes the plan that we had in mind, we might change our mind, but it's important for us to understand that changing your mind and selling yourself out and deciding that you want to give up, that you want to quit, those are two completely different concepts. And even writing an agreement for ourselves, a contract that you write for yourself, it might start something like this. Dear Ashley, this is a contractual agreement that I am setting forth here now on whatever the date is today. We're not going to wait until January the 1st. This is the thing that is most important to me. And I vow that I will do this and this and this and this and whatever the things are. How many times as you listen to this, have you ever set a contractual agreement with yourself? Probably never. How important, it w- how important would it be if you had a contract with yourself that you carried around in your wallet? Maybe you put it in your purse. If you're like me and you have a journal, what if you wrote in that journal the contract to yourself? And what if you challenged yourself to accomplish that contract and create a new one at the very least every single quarter? Imagine all the things that you would finally be able to get done if you held yourself to that standard. And I think it's important for us to recognize that we are all, I'm I'm sitting here with my hand raised up in the air, we are all up here. And our standard for ourselves needs to be set up here all of the time. And I think that for a lot of us it is. But then many times we don't challenge ourselves to the capacity to where we actually execute on the things that we need to do every day in order for us to make it up here. And yes, my hand is now raised back up in the air. So as you sit there today, I want you to think about what the things are. What is a contract that you can write for yourself with yourself today? And most importantly, what could you put in that contract as the non-negotiables? The non-negotiables could be things like, I am going to assure that I never allow somebody to come into my circle to change my energy. I'm going to assure that I do not give anybody else my personal power to change my mentality. How many times do we do that? I certainly have been guilty of it. It is more important now than ever to ensure the parameters around our kingdom, especially our own personal sphere, this mental, this beautiful mental capacity that we all have sitting on the top of our bodies, and to never allow somebody else to take that away from us. And I'm going to challenge you to decide to create your own contractual agreement with yourself. And if you do decide to do that, I am super curious to hear what it is that you decide to challenge yourself with. And I am also here to support you through that challenge. You could reach me at Ashley Walton on Facebook. You can join us in our Police, Fire, Military, and Families Facebook group. 
And as we are about to enter this new year, just know that I am sending you a long, tight hug from my home to yours.